Hey, what's up guys? In today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different. This is more of a show and tell rather than a full blown tutorial. Recently I've been reminiscing about the early to mid 2000s where devices were a little bit funky, a little bit different looking, a lot of clear plastic, and how that's sort of gone out of favour at the moment, with the last 10 years to be honest. And I'd really like to sort of bring that back with some of the devices that I own. I was just browsing the internet the other day when I stumbled across this really neat little project by a person called TMac. This is a fully drop-in replacement PCB for Super Nintendo controllers and it uses all new parts. Some of the ICs used inside the Super Nintendo controller are a bit hard to get these days, but they've managed to find a modern day equivalent that fits the layout and everything perfectly. They've also gone ahead and designed this board to have extra features such as LEDs and a SOCD filter. If you don't know what this filter does, basically it prevents you from having multiple button inputs at the same time, which is something more for speedrunners. I didn't end up populating those parts for this board, I just used it sort of standard. But I did end up populating the LEDs which you saw in the start of the video, and I reckon it turned out pretty nice. As for the housing, I decided to go with an early 2000s theme, and that's a clear shell housing with clear buttons, but the L and R buttons are purple, which gives it a bit of a play it loud sort of vibe. And seeing as I'm using a brand new PCB, brand new chips, and a brand new housing, I thought may as well go the full hog with it, and go with a brand new cable and a brand new socket. So with the cable, I ended up finding on AliExpress this really nice 5 core just sort of I think it's just USB cable or something it's not shielded or anything but it's clear so it sort of matches the style really nicely and you can see the colored wire through it fairly easily. As for the connector on the end to go into the console I couldn't find any 3D files to 3D print this and I didn't really have the skills to design it myself so I just ended up going with just a plain black replacement extension cord rather than stealing the cable off a genuine controller. It's just worked out better that way. Plus it's a little bit cheaper. The Super Nintendo controllers here in Japan at the moment are getting quite expensive. Don't know why, I think it's maybe it's just the age of the unit starting to get the proper vintage status. As for the rubber domes, which is needed for the button contacts to work and have the right feel to them, I just bought those on AliExpress. I really should have bought them from somewhere better than that because they're not quite nice enough. They don't have the nice same feel as the original controller. I did later on find out some other sellers that are selling these, some other stores, and they've made them in-house and they seem to be high quality ones. By the time I found out, I already halfway built the project, so maybe next time I'll get some better quality ones. For the components on the board here, as I mentioned before, this uses new parts that are still available. The original Super Nintendo controller uses some shift registers that aren't available anymore. These are modern day replacements for them. So we've got the two CD4021Bs. These are used for the button inputs and everything, so you definitely need this part. And then we've got some resistor arrays. These are 100 kilo ohms. there's two of them. And then we've got some capacitors. These are just multi-layer ceramic capacitors. They're 0805 size. They are 10 picofarads at 100 volts. And then we've got the optional things that I've added onto the board here. We've got the LEDs. There is eight of them. They are just standard 0603 three volt LEDs. And as you'll see later in the video, to get the multicolored to work properly, I had to do some bit of finessing with some wire and some resistors and stuff because of the forward voltage is different on each color of LED. And then we've got the 100 ohm resistors. These are variable depending on how bright you want the LEDs to be. One part of this design that I'm not using because I don't really need it is the SOCD filter. So that stands for simultaneous opposing cardinal directions. This part of the design is fully optional and it just cancels out simultaneous left, right, up and down input on the D-pad. As it mentions in the About Project page that I'll link down below. This is more intended for speedrunners, not something that I'm going to be doing with this controller. I'm just going to be playing Mario Kart to be honest. And that's about it really. 
but yeah, if you want to go ahead and use that, you can. Otherwise, you can see later on on the PCB where you can bypass this feature entirely and save about 20 cents. Now, before we get any further into the video here, just a huge shout out to PCB Way. They supply both the manufacturing of the PCB and all the 3D printed items for this video. If you don't know who PCB Way are, they are a PCB manufacturer. They also do 3D printing, both in FDM and SLS printing. That's using a laser, it's really cool. As well as resin printing, CNC machining, injection molding, and heaps more. They even offer a turnkey solution for PCB assembly. I've been a PCB Way customer for a few years now, even before they even reached out and offered to sponsor the channel. So if you're interested, if you need to get any CNC machining done or 3D printing or PCBs made, check out my link below and you'll receive a discount off your first order. All right, back to the video. So the Super Nintendo controller is actually very simple in the way it's constructed. You just have the top shell, bottom shell, and all the buttons, and the PCB itself. For the drop-in replacement PCB, its assembly is also fairly simple, just with the added benefit of having the LEDs, which we'll get more into in a little bit. So to assemble this board, all you need to do is just populate the capacitors and the resistor arrays, as well as populating the shift registers. If you wish to use the SOCD filter, you can also populate those two ICs as well. Otherwise, you can flip the board over, and on the back we have some handy dandy little solder points here. All you have to do is just bridge the points that say bypass or enable if you're using it or not. And that's pretty much it for the component level for the basic design. Now, if you're also going to be using LEDs in your PCB, you're going to have to also populate all the diodes and the two 100 ohm resistors on the back. Now, for my design, because I really wanted to mimic the Famicom and the PAL Super Nintendo button colors, I used different LEDs for each button. Now, I had a bit of a brain fart here and I forgot that um, different LED colors have different forward voltages. So when I originally populated this board, only one or two of the LEDs was working and I was trying to scratch my head trying to work out why it wasn't working. And then once I did some thinking and had some food, I came back and I realized that for the blue, green, yellow, and red LEDs to all light up at the same time and the same brightness, I had to then spend I spent probably about two or three hours just trying out different resistor combos to get them all lighting roughly equally. If you look at it really closely, you can kind of tell that they're not all the same brightness, but they're all fairly dim enough that it's not super noticeable. If I was running all these LEDs at their full current, it probably would be quite noticeable that they're different colors or different brightnesses, but to my eye, they look fine now. So to do this, what I had to do was, without modifying the board much at all really, or cutting any traces or anything, I first populated the resistors on the rear with, I've forgotten which resistors I use for that now, but I'll put it on the screen now. I populated those original resistor locations that are for the entire parallel string of LEDs here. And then what I did with the surface mount LEDs is I turned them 90 degrees and ran a, another resistor in series and a little piece of wire. This is so the they're all getting the same voltage to start with, but I'm just adjusting the resistance between the LEDs themselves and that new rail that I've got going there. And to hold everything in place and so they don't fall off, I also just put a dab of super glue on them. I'm using a low smoke or low fume super glue that doesn't leave that nasty white powder over everything and you can't tell that they've been super glued to be honest. You can sort of see a bit of glue residue there, but it's not very much. Now, as for the D-pad, that's pretty simple. We just stuck with white because I couldn't think of a better color for that. That side of the circuit is very simple. You just populate all the LEDs, make sure the polarity is the right way around. LEDs have a little marking on them, you can see them. I'm using the microscope here, which helps a lot. And if you put them in backwards, they just won't work. They're all populated and they have a 100 ohm resistor on the back there to make them equal brightness to the rest of the LEDs. Now, as for the wire, because I chose to use this nice clear wire that I've got here, I opted to not populate the little connector that's meant to go on here. This design is meant to use either a Molex connector or the original connector that comes with the Super Nintendo controller and that's sort of like a quick connect for soldering on the cable to the board. It's more for helping in manufacturing rather than anything else. So I just opted to not do that. 
If you're just salvaging the cable from an original controller, you can just desolder the little connector that it comes with or just quick assembly. You can just desolder that from your original cable, plop it in here, you don't have to mess around with stripping any wires or anything. And then after that I took the other end of my nice shiny clear wire and I popped open the extension cable that I bought from Amazon, removed the ugly crappy black wire that was in there, and then soldered in my own wires, keeping in mind the pinouts, I was just using a little diagram from the internet to see which way which wire goes where, and then referencing that to the silk screen on the board. Speaking of the board, I didn't mention this before, I chose the white one just because I felt that the white solder mask would reflect the LEDs much better than using a green one or anything like that. And then when it came to assembly, because this is a resin printed part, I wanted to make sure that I didn't get any dust or anything in there. I was being very careful not to get too much dust in there. As for the buttonholes, because I chose a resin print, sometimes the fitment isn't quite super duper perfect and I wanted to have a bit of diffusion. So I used my little die grinder and I just ground out the inside of the buttonholes there and that gave it a nice diffused effect and I quite like it actually. And then when it came to assembly, I just had to put the two halves together. It was a bit of a tight squeeze, but I managed to get it together in the end and this is the result. It turned out really nice, I really like it. I'm actually tempted to try and make a different controller, maybe an Xbox One or original Xbox or something like that. If I can get my hands on the files, I'll leave any files I use down in the link in the description below. And if you like this video, if you like this style of video, please let me know down in the comments below and I'll try and make more videos this sort of more relaxed style. And yeah, if you want to check out PCBWay, check them in the link down below. And until next time, see ya.